Riddle and Epal almost meet for the first time during the school's opening ceremony. After Ace sneaks Epal out of the school, they are pursued by Riddle. Riddle promises swift and merciless judgment if it is revealed that they are merely playing truant, but they successfully evade him by hiding in bushes. The three characters of Riddle, Epal, and Ace overlap again during the Phantom Bride event. Riddle volunteers Ace to participate in the efforts to seduce Eliza, but Ace refuses to have any part of it. Riddle says that he is free to return to the dorm, because he will be just fine with Epel. Riddle explains that, unlike Ace, Epel possesses actual bravery, and reflects on how Epel has more courage in the tip of his pinky finger than his dorm's first-year students have in their entire bodies. Riddle telling Epel that it is for the best that they don't have any spineless worms tagging along to slow down the team succeeds in getting Ace to declare that he will be joining the team, and Riddle and Epel won't get a turn with him there. Riddle and Epel share a conversation during Halloween about how the holiday is celebrated where they are from, with Epel explaining a party that was mostly meant to gear up for the impending apple harvest. Epel explains, about 40 or so relatives and people from the neighborhood would gather at my place and go wild. Riddle is surprised by the idea of so many people gathering together, and scandalized by the revelation that everyone would share a platter of food without any set serving sizes. How would you know how much is polite to eat? Riddle observes that Epel clearly loves his hometown, and when Epel asks how it is that Riddle celebrated at his house, Riddle reveals that he was not even allowed to walk around outside on days like this, and he had been jealous of children who had been allowed to dress up and go trick-or-treating. Epel encourages Riddle to let loose and have fun now that he is at NRC and does not have to follow his parents' rules, and Riddle says he will consider it. Epel then invites Riddle to Harveston for Halloween, saying that his relatives would be happy to host him. Riddle reflects that he would have no idea how to conduct himself at such a party, but says he will think about it. Riddle is also Epel's judge for Master Chef. Epel says he knows that Riddle is going to be nitpicky but Riddle is immediately impressed, commenting on how Epel has put a lot of work into his dish, such as shaping the carrots into flowers. Epel has cut his ingredients for stew overly large on purpose, saying that that is more satisfying, which gives Riddle pause, but at the end Riddle is pleased. Epel begins listing off the nutritional information of his stew, with Riddle's encouragement, revealing that he took down notes from the chef while the stew was simmering, though parts have become illegible because he was writing so fast. Riddle comments that not being able to read his own notes defeats the purpose of taking them at all, but commends Epel for his attitude, and says that he will try to follow Epel's example by prioritizing a dish's nutritional value as well as its presentation and flavor. The two overlap again during the glorious masquerade event when Riddle volunteers to act as bait for the fire lotuses and buy enough time for the others to escape. Epel declares that he will be staying with Riddle, despite Riddle's protests, saying, if we're talking about queens going into battle, the fairest queen did the same thing. The two are left to distract the fire lotuses on their own, with Riddle quickly becoming worn out. After the group escapes to safety, Epel comments that he is worried about Riddle's stamina and that he may be running out of magic, as Riddle is barely able to stay on his broom. They are attacked by lotuses that have been attracted to their magic, and Riddle declares that he will be sacrificing himself, having accepted his fate. Riddle tries to send Epel away while he is the focus of the lotuses, saying that he will protect at least one of them, but Epel refuses, using his unique magic to protect Riddle, instead. The two reunite at the conclusion of the event, with Epel asking Riddle if he is mad at him. Riddle confirms that he is, as Epel putting him to sleep and handling the fight by himself had been far too dangerous. Epel apologizes for using his unique magic on Riddle without his consent, but insists that it was the only way they could have escaped, and that he does not regret doing so. Riddle reveals that he is mortified by the fact that he was saved by a first-year student, and ultimately thanks Epel for his help. 